that the, the had over 40 different gods that was worshipped. And you also had uh, the goddess of Diana, which was a huge thing in the time and competitive with the truth of the gospel. And it was also tempting to the Christians in their time uh, to be followers of, pag of the pageantry of paganry because it, it played often to the flesh. So he's telling us to soldier up, be, be good soldiers. Don't be turncoats, don't be uh, weak, don't be distracted, don't be lured in uh, to the tragedy of, of paganry. And, and therefore, by the time we get to our text, uh, the Apostle Paul is really being poignant about the fact that, that they need to wake up. Sometimes we live with so much, so subject of the times that we, we don't know that we've become affected by the times and we're beginning to act out uh, in, in the same kind of way as people in the world are. He says, therefore, he tells us very clear, be followers of God as dear children and walk in the love as Christ also hath loved us and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet savior. It kind of sounds like some of the other things Paul has written, and you've heard me quote it many times, Romans chapter 12, verse 1, where he says, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a living sacrifice. So therefore, you, you see him as Christ has loved us and given himself for us, that we ought to offer ourselves a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is our reasonable act of worship, that we present ourselves to God holy, not, not just like acting like the world, but that we, we are present ourselves to God as a sacred sacrifice that's holy and acceptable to him. And then he gives us the idea of what makes us what makes us holy? How do we behave in trying to be holy? Verse 3, but fornication and uncleanliness and covetousness, let it not be once named among you as becometh. As becometh means which is like. We say that that's just like him to go and, and knock over everything. That's just like him to show up to the party uh, or to the family reunion drunk. That's, that's just like him uh, to, to, to make a lot of money. On the stock, there, there's some things that just, he says, this should not become something that people associate as that's just like the saints, as becometh the saints. And, and I like this because I, I'm more committed today uh, to trying to be a saint of God than I am trying to be a Christian in this day and time because the Bible constantly calls us to be sanctified, to present ourselves holy. Uh, to make an offering of sacrifice, sweet savor to God. And he begins to paint it out in verse 3. Not fornication, nor uncleanness, nor covetousness, uh, nor let it not be once named among you as become of the saints. Neither filthiness or foolishness or jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Let us be known for, let it be as become of the saints, to be known more for our gratitude, for our graciousness than for our 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 filthiness or for our our uh, humanity, so to speak, our fleshliness. Verse five: For this ye know that no whoremonger or unclean person nor covetous man who is an idolater hath an inheritance in the kingdom of God and of Christ. Let no man deceive you. Uh, you ought to keep your 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 pen there. Let no man deceive. Let Let no man deceive you, verse 6, with vain words. For because of these things come of the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. He starts out at verse 1, telling us to be followers of God as dear children and, and to walk in love. And he ends up in verse 9 telling us, uh, or verse 8 and 9, that we ought to be careful. Uh, first, sorry, verse 6, 7, 8, 9, be careful about vain words that's going to come on the children of disobedience. Uh, for ye were sometimes in darkness, didn't know where you was going, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Not you have light. You are light. You are light. That's what we are in this world because we've been enlightened. We've been instructed by God. So 
since we've been instructed by God, we've obeyed God. He says, we are light in this world. Remember Jesus in Matthew 5? Ye are the light of the world. The, the, book, the, the Israelites were told, be a light unto the Gentiles. That means that in our very walk, we should, uh, we should cause light for those who are looking for the way of God because they should see it in us. Walk as children of light. I guess e even right here, let's, let's talk about that theme of, of light for a moment. Uh, look at 1 John. Let's, let's look at 1 John. 1 John chapter 1. Uh, I hope you, it's okay if you, if you text, if you want to write something, if you're on Zoom, write something uh, in the message box and Sister Candy can perhaps let me know what it is. I can't hear right now, but Sister Candy can catch it. Uh, so, uh, and maybe even if, if you uh, have a comment, she can let me know to unmute myself so we can hear it. Uh, we're going to try that and see how, how that goes. First John chapter 1, and uh, he says uh, at verse number, number uh, 5, this then is the message, First John chapter 1 verse number 5, this then is the message uh, which we have heard of him and declare unto you that God is light. Remember, he just said, we're light. And as he is light, we have, this verse, I, I lost my verse. This is a message that you've heard and we declare unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Catch that. We lie and do not the truth. Walking in light is indeed doing the truth. Many of us believe the truth, we just don't do the truth. Many of us would agree with the truth, but we're not doers of the truth. If we say we have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Remember he says, if the blind be leaders of the blind, both fall into the ditch. The idea that we are light means that we can see. We can see what's true. We can, we can see what is right. We can see what is good. And we do what is good, right, and true. Being doers of what's good, right, and true is the idea that we are no longer in darkness. We see it and we do it. Uh, we, we, we hear it and, and we obey it. Uh, we, we understand it and we live it. Uh, say, well, Brother Brown, does this mean uh, when we sin that means we're, we're blind? No, when we continue to sin, it means we're walking in darkness. It's the idea that we see and choose not to see in order to do or live like we're living. That's so, so he's saying that if you're living like that, that and you say you, you're in the light, you're lying and you're not doing the truth. When we say we have fellowship with him and we don't walk like him, then we lie and do not the truth. Verse number seven. But if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Christ Jesus, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. And if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Not only, not only are we not in the truth, the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins, and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and the word and his word, that truth and his word is not in us. Isn't that interesting? I love the second part, so I'm, I'm going to read it, even though that's not a part of what we're saying there. In chapter 2, my little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sin, and not for ours only, but also for the sins of the whole world. Hereby we do know that if we know him, if we keep his commandments. So we see that that light, that 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 light play with John. John plays with light uh, often in the scriptures to help us understand. That walking with God is in the light, walking in errors is in the dark. Walking with God is in the truth, walking in error is walking the lie. Walking with Christ is walking in wisdom, walking in the world is walking.
walking in, in foolishness. Uh, look at St. John, St. John. Every time I come over here, over this particular text, I know we need to read uh, what the Bible says in, in St. John as well. St. John chapter 3, and I believe it's going up to around verse 18. Uh, verse 18, he that believeth on him is not condemned. I, I'll go up a little bit earlier. Uh, he says, this is the condemnation. Hey, there you go. Verse, it's down a little further, verse 19. And this is the condemnation. You can read up higher because he's already started on this conversation, but just for our purposes, verse, verse number, number 19. This is the condemnation that light is come into the world and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. Amen? Is that in your Bible? Because their deeds were evil. Verse 20. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest their deeds should be reproved. Some people can't take correction, whether it come from a person or from the Bible. We resist it because we want to keep walking in darkness, and the light hurts our eyes. You ever been in a dark room when the light first comes on? We squint. Sometimes that's what the truth is like for us. When the light first comes on, it's uncomfortable. When the light first comes on, for some of us, it's painful. When light first comes on, it's shameful. So here he said, we, we ought to get used to the light. If we're walking in the light, we don't have to worry about being blinded by the light. But he says darkness, they, he says, and, and men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved or corrected. Verse 21. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifested, that they were wrought in God. Soldier up. Soldier up was our topic today because in order to take some, some truths that God gives us, you have to soldier up. You have to be a soldier for, for God. You have to be a, 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 a soldier in the army of the Lord, meaning you, you don't move until you get your orders. Uh, I remember when, when my brother was in the army, uh, it took him a while when he was about to come home on leave because he was waiting for his orders. Once he's got his orders, he can take leave and he know where he's going next. If we take our orders, our commandments from the Lord, uh, when we take our leave, we, we have in our possession what's next, what the Lord requires of us next. Many people used to come down in front of the church and say, brothers and sisters, I've sinned, I repent of my sins, and I ask the church to pray for me that I might grow stronger in the Lord, that I can find my purpose in the Lord. Well, you got your purpose in the Bible. You just have to listen to the commandments so you'll know what comes next. What, what, are, my, what are my orders? Well, who are you in the text? Are you, are you the pastor? Are you the minister? Are you a member? Are you a servant? Are you assigned to anything? Then your orders are already there. You just have to be discovered. Uh, for us who are, who are in the body in general, he tells us, obey those who have ruled over us. That's your orders. That, so, so you do not walk outside uh, of that expression. Obey those who have ruled over you, who have taught unto you the word of God, Hebrews uh, chapter 13 and, and 7. So those are your orders from the Lord. If you walk in light as he is in the light, uh, then you have fellowship with him as you keep those commandments. It doesn't mean that, that uh, leadership has a right to come in your house and order you around. But as things relating to the kingdom, obey those who have ruled over you and, and, and hold them accountable for helping you to express your righteousness in God by finding and equipping you uh, for that work. That's what Ephesians, part of our, our text in Ephesians is, is telling us just that. Ephesians uh, chapter 4, around verse, uh, verse 12, 11 and 12, uh, he gave some apostles and prophets and evangelists and teachers for the work of the ministry, for the perfecting of the saints, uh, for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry until we come into the unity of the faith. That is why we have leadership in the body of Christ to help uh, teach, build, appoint, and assign people in the body of Christ to their ministry. But if you're resistant, if you, if you are not listening, if you are disobedient, if you are uh, on your own terms, then nobody can help you find what God has for you. And, and his plan is not working for you because you got your own plan. 
But but St. John chapter 3 says that, that those who are walking in the light come to the light, that our deeds will be manifested, will be uncovered, that they are wrought, that they are produced, that they are uncovered in God. Amen? Is that in your Bible? Mm. Amen. Praise God. So when we when we are in the light, when we when we respect the light, when we when we accept the light, uh, then then we are we are God's God's product, and people can can trust us with God because we're walking in the light as as He is in the light. Let's turn to Matthew five and let's revisit. Uh, what Jesus taught in his uh, Beatitude sermon, uh, because he uses that light as well, all over again. Matthew chapter five. Uh, let me start at verse number twelve. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. He said that, that he letting them know that I don't care how much trouble you be in, even in your trouble you're light. Not only are you light, but you're salt. He says, he says, verse 13, ye are the salt of the earth, but if the salt has lost its savor, wherewith shall it be salted? You can't make salt salty. You can't salt salty. You can't salt salt. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out and to be trodden on the foot of men. And then he goes on and says, ye are, the, ye are the light of the world. Here's our text. You are the light of the world, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. You stop trying to think you can be low to, uh, a down low Christian. You can't put your Christianity in a closet. I mean, everybody's coming out now. Gay people coming out, queer people coming out, transvestite people coming out. They got so many different. I, I was sitting down the other day. I said, I don't even know what this, what is what is what is queer folk. What is what is, what is, what is the, they got the terms for everything. Your faith of being a light. You're the light of the world. God has you has your way of living meant to be on display. It's a city set on a hill. You can see it from anywhere around it. You cannot be hid. Verse number 15, neither do men light candles and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick or on a candle stand. That's what he's really talking about. And uh, in the room, that your, here you go, verse 16. So uh, in the room, so our, our study of, of Isaiah 58, what that really means. I spent a great deal of time in the church and never knew what that meant. I thought it was let your talent shine and, and that kind of thing. But he's talking about your good deeds, that, that, that you you don't fast for yourself. You fast for somebody else. Let's look over there. Uh, and, and it, it, well, let, let me read that last part first. Uh, verse 16, let your light so shine. I'm going to destroy the law or the purpose I am come to not to destroy but to fulfill. So I guess what I should take you back to just to keep us right in, in the proper mindset is back to Isaiah 58, which we've been studying uh, for the last few weeks. Uh, it's important that, that you begin, that you see with clarity what other people just assume to know. Uh, Isaiah 58, and, and let, let's talk about when, when, when does their light burst forward? When, when will their, their light shine forth? <coughs> <coughs> we'll start at verse number six, down to verse number eight. Pull thy bread to the hungry, and that thou bring the poor, that thou that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked, that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh. Look at verse eight now. Then, uh, circle then in your Bible. Then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine health shall spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee, and the glory of the Lord shall be thy real reward. Let thy light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. Your cry, and he shall say, Here I am, if thou takest away from the midst of thee, the yoke, and put forth the finger and speaking vanity. I mean, stop pointing at other people. Stop, stop, uh, stop being uh, uh, caught up in, in other people's mess and speaking useless words, but use your resources when you 
uh, fast to help somebody. What he's saying basically is when you stop doing uh, religious uh, in order to serve, then whenever you're uh, breaking the yoke, when you're feeding the poor, when you're sheltering the homeless, when you're doing uh, some things as in feeding the hungry, feeding bread to them, then your light shall uh, come forth. Ye are the light of the world. The city sat on a hill cannot be hid. You can't hide those good works. And if thou draw out, if you get this verse 10, if thou draw out thy soul uh, to the hungry and satisfy the afflicted soul, then shall thy light rise in obscurity and thy darkness be as noonday sun. If you learn how to be some good to somebody other than yourself, we get depressed, we go into a dark room, we hang out by ourselves, we sit and say, woe is me, uh, nobody likes me, everybody hates me, I'm gonna go eat worms, big ones, little ones, skinny ones, fat ones. Um, we, we sit back and we fall so deep into our dark depression. And he said, no, if you if you were fast and if you do some good to some out and make fat thy bones and thou shalt be like the water garden and like a spring of water, whose water fell not. What's that depicted? Remember Jesus says, you shall know them by their fruit. So even in, in our worst time, we're gonna be uh, blossoming. We're gonna be fruit bearing. We're gonna be doing good. Not just baptizing people, we're gonna be helping some people who are in need mm -hmm. just through our lifestyle. Through our life, we'll heal. Thou shalt be close on and on uh, about our delighting ourselves in the Lord. So that idea about us being light, uh, soldiering up, carry the banner of light. Look at Philippians. I wasn't even right there, but while I'm on this theme about the light, I just think it's fruit for us to get, get, a, get a very rounded uh, view about why th this light is throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. We, sometimes it goes over here because we see it only in the place that it's written. But look at how, how, how light is in all of Paul's writings, is in John's writing. Uh, and, and all of the, the uh, prophets writing, uh, he tells, uh, Isaiah says that Israel is the light unto the Gentiles. So it's still there. Look at what Paul says to the Philippians. And I, I think you all have been studying Philippians on Sunday morning, and you may have spent some time uh, even in all this. Look at verse 14. See, our light has gone out because many churches are known for their murmuring and not known for their light. Look at what he says, do all things without murmuring and disputing. Most churches are known for their murmuring and disputing. Uh, no matter what we're told, we murmur, why can we have to do it? Why can we got to do it? Uh, I talked to one preacher once, he said, I can't even get the church to wear the same color on Sunday. Uh, we, we, why we got to do that? I'm not, that's, that's denominational. Well, I mean, maybe it's, it's exercising a, a, a practice of unity that we can do the same thing at the same time because we want to, we enjoy one another. Look at this, he says, he says, do all things without murmuring and disputing, verse 14, chapter two of Philippians, that ye may be blameless, harmless, sons of God, without rebuke in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation among whom you shine as lights in the world, amen? Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labor in vain, yea, and if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, I joy and rejoice with all of you. I, I, I don't know. This, that's beautiful to me what Paul is saying. He said, look here. He, that's, that's his great ambition, to help the church become a light, to help us become lights individual that come together and make one great light. Get this straight also. When we think of light, we think about these bulbs like we have in this auditorium, you know, these 100 watts and and, and these light bulbs. They didn't have light bulbs back then. Uh, what they had then was a fire, a candle, an oil lamp that you, you put a fire on, or, or a wick that you lit that had been dipped in oil. So when they talk about lights, they're talking about fire, a torch, uh, a fireplace. So he's talking about us being on fire for yes. the Lord and for his ways, that we're on such, such kind of fire that if you leave us alone and put us on a stand, We'll give light to the whole room. If you put us outside, we'll give light to the whole area. Nobody can ignore fire in darkness. And I'm just simply saying, if we would get on fire for the Lord, we won't be so caught up in darkness unless we are a part of the darkness. Uh -huh. 
that's what makes us murmur and dispute because we're part of the darkness. When we become a part of the light, we dispel the murmuring and disputing. We become uh, the light of the world. Why? Because we ain't there to murmur and dispute. We're there to help and encourage. We're there to break bond, bonds. We, they're there to help the sick get well. We're there to help the weak get strong. We're there to help the hungry get fed. We're there to help the dispersed feel welcomed in because we are light and we are not darkness. Yeah. And if we do that, then our light shall spring forth like the noonday. Kind of makes you wonder. So why is the church becoming so obscure? Maybe it's because we've been singing this little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. When it requires more than a song, it requires for you to let your light shine through your service. And for the same cause also do we joy and rejoice with me. Amen. That's the Paul, Paul, Apostle Paul speaking uh, at that time to the, uh, the Philippians about light. I guess let, let me give, take a few moments and also talk about uh, the wisdom that, that, uh, that, that was in, encouraged in this particular uh, text. Let's go back to Colossians. Uh, we got anybody talking up uh, online? Huh? We, we can try right now. We got anybody on, on there? I don't have it up right here. What we got? Uh, I'm not sure. I think I'm looking at, at something different. Say again. Okay, no comments, no questions. Okay. Let's look back then at Colossians. Uh, uh, I said Colossians, but our, our text is Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Man, it's weird not being able to hear y'all talk, and not even on, online. And see then that you walk, verse 15, see then, if the, we understand, understand even this piece of our text, because remember he talks about us not, not uh, us reproving, uh, but all things y'all are, are reproved are made manifested by light, for whatsoever doth not make manifest, or whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Whenever, we, whenever things about Christ are manifested in our life and we make it seeable by those who are looking for Christ and those who are watching our walk, then we become light. Verse 15, see then that ye walk circumspectly and not as fools, but as wise. He says, redeeming the time. Amen? Is that in your Bible? So, so what does he mean when he says circumspectly? What, what, what does that, that mean? Y'all remember what that, that meant? Anybody online remember what, 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 what that meant? What does circumspectly mean? I want to see if anybody caught me. Anybody? Talk back to me. Anybody talking up? I want to see what happens when they talk out. What does circumspectly mean? I can't hear anybody. I can't hear anybody right now. What do you say? Oh, there, I hear you now. Hot dogs. Sister William? As we're saying in the church, we're in Say one. Say again. With pure thoughts in your heart. With pure thoughts in your heart. Okay, I like that. Any, anything? Because in order to have pure thoughts in your heart, you have to be careful. So circumspectly literally means you walk carefully uh, or you watch out for how you I'm walk. Sorry, I don't know if you can hear me, but you lost audio. Okay, I, I hear you now. Can you hear me now? I got you, I hear you. You hear me? Okay. Because I don't want to unmute myself right now, even though I'm hoping that you don't hear the echo like I do. So, so when we talk about walking circumspectly, we're talking about uh, walking carefully. Let, let me read to you what, what he says out of the Amplified Bible. I'm not a big fan of the Amplified Bible, but but listen listen to what he says uh, out, of, out of the Amplified. I'm going to try to mute myself. 
when you talk about the amplified Bible, I did read this yesterday. Give me this. He says, therefore, seeing that ye walk carefully, that means living with the honor and purpose and courage, shining those, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil. In the bracket, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people, making the very most of your time on earth recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are evil or filled with evil. Therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, but understand and affirmingly grasp, firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Amen. Talk back to me. Are you still out there? Can y'all hear me? I hear you. I hear me. Charlie Harris, I'm mute. Go ahead. And I was just looking, you know, thinking about um, that word circumspect. Uh, it's, it's walking with uh, being diligent, uh, being prudent. Uh, and in our walk with, uh, with God, uh, God wants us word diligent means to make haste, you know, not not uh, fumbling and mumbling around, but uh, as your topic is, soldier up. Mm -hmm. uh, and so uh, that walking circumspectly, uh, that means that we have to uh, uh, do things in a, in a prudent and in a careful way. Mm -hmm. That's it. That, that like, like a soldier would walk through a minefield, you, you're carefully paying attention to your steps, to your, literally here he's talking about your behavior. Some of us uh, are not careful about our behavior. We, we, we behave, uh, we think being sincere is behaving however you feel it, while being sincere is being careful, uh, being thoughtful, that being watchful about your behavior. You understand that? And I, the reason why I read read the Amplified Bible is because they go overboard in trying to make that that very point that we have to be very careful in our behavior before the Lord and and in our walk because we understand that we want to be light and not darkness. Amen? So, if, if I'm going to be light, not only do I have to be careful about my conduct and my walk, I have to be careful that I am not deceived, that I am not distracted, that I, that I am not uh, unwise, that, that I haven't been taken advantage of uh, by the enemy or by someone who does not know. Sometimes people who don't know speak more elaborately than those who do know. They speak with more conviction than those who do know. Uh, he talks in First John, these things are written so that you may know that you have eternal life. I listen to people all the time that talk like they know they have eternal life, but if they knew what I knew, they know they don't. Uh, they're, they're living in a way that's contrary to Scripture. They're living in a religious way, but not according to what uh, Scriptures are teaching. So look, at uh, Paul wrote to the Colossians right at about the same time he wrote Ephesians. In fact, a lot of things in, in uh, Colossians are, are, are very similar to what he has in Ephesians. So let's go to Colossians as, as our time kind of dwindles down. Colossians chapter 2, uh, verse number number 8. And I guess I'll read these off to you because still not quite where we want to be at with the sound because I'm not sure what comes across uh, on the Internet whenever uh, I hear it, but I'm hearing a lot of echo. Are, are they hearing me? They are they hearing me? Amen. So when I look at Colossians, listen, listen to this as he uh, tells us, don't be a fool. Uh, don't be made a fool of. Don't be a fool. Don't be made a fool of. Don't be a fool. Uh, Y'all know the song, everybody plays a fool sometimes. There's no exception to the rule. Listen, baby. Maybe fact you want me to be cruel. Yeah, but it, so uh, we have to be careful not to be fools and not to be made a fool yeah. of. 
because we are the light of the world. And what this requires of us is a kind of carefulness, circumspectness, diligence, determined to check ourselves and check it twice to make sure our steps are, our conduct is consistent and right with the Lord. So he tells us in verse number eight of Colossians, look, listen to him. He says, uh, as verse six, as ye have therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught, abounding therein with thanksgiving. That, that sounds to me like a uh, circumspect. Get this right here. But this right here is the problem. Why we sometimes fail to walk circumspectly. Verse 8, beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit. After the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. We're all supposed to be helping us to follow Christ. Take his yoke upon us and learn of him. But when we get caught up teaching traditions of men and holding people accountable to traditions of men, we end up uh, spoiling people through philosophy and vain deceit. Matthew chapter uh, 8, verse number 15, uh, Paul, uh, Matthew warns, Jesus warns the people of their worship becoming vain. They honor me with their mouth, worship me with their lips, but their hearts. I said, did I see Matthew? Yeah, Matthew 15, verse number 8. But their hearts are far from me. In vain they do worship me teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. You remember that Matthew, he begins to warn them that their worship becomes vain because they have been spoiled through philosophy and vain deceit. They think they're obeying God, but all they're doing is keeping uh, commandments of men, traditions of men. And, and they have somehow, by doing that, have, have, have neutralized the word of God. But he says, beware lest any man should spoil you, Colossians 2, verse 8, through philosophy and vain deceit, after the traditions of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. Jesus says in Matthew 23, uh, he, he's, oh, I'm sorry, Matthew 7, verse 23, Matthew 7, 23, not every man that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, it might be 21, shall enter to the kingdom of heaven, but him that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, many will come to me in that day and shall say to me, Lord, Lord, uh, have I not prophesied in thy name, cast out devils in thy name, and done many wonderful works? Jesus says, then, I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity, lawlessness, deceiving you. With vain words, vain deceit. Uh, this is what we have to be careful of. Otherwise, we live the religious life of a fool. Is that in your Bible? Uh, yes, sir. Spoil. Well, one of the things we, we see when we talk about spoil is uh, what the picture I get in my mind when we talk about spoil is, is the picture of, of, of food that goes bad. Uh, I'm, I'm going to read the Amplified Version on that again. See that ye see to it that no one take you captive through philosophy and empty deceit according to the traditions of of mere men following the elements and principles of the world, but rather uh, following the truth, uh, true teaching. I think that that's version number eight, right? Yeah. The true teachings of Christ. Uh, so he, he doesn't even use the word uh, spoil here. He just talks about uh, people taking you captive, so, so to speak. Uh, so I would think that that spoil is carrying the idea of, of ruining your liberty with Christ. Mm -hmm. Okay. You is he it? discussing is rudiment? No, spoil. He, told, he, he was talking about the, the idea of those who are spoiling. Uh, I, I think this, uh, uh, it, it talks about elemental spirits. Uh, let no man take you captive. It was verse 8 that we were talking about, right? Yeah. By philosophy, empty deceit, according to the human traditions, according to the elemental spirits, 
of the world and not according to Christ. That's what that's what the ESV says. For in him the whole fullness uh, of the deity dwells uh, bodily. Amen. So he talks about an elemental spirit. So they all try to do something a little bit uh, different, but they all carry in the same same kind of idea. Uh, was that Sister Williams? Did you have something you wanted to say about that, Sister Williams? No, I was just asking what part was he discussing. We couldn't hear what he was saying, but we heard your, your response. It looked like Brother Harrison has his hand up. Brother Harris? Uh, yes, sir. So uh, uh, I look at that, that spoil when he's talking about spoil. Don't let anyone spoil you. Don't let anyone uh, uh, deceive you with, uh, with, with uh, ungodliness, with, with uh, the wrong motives, uh, mm -hmm. motives other than the word of God. Mm -hmm. And so don't let anyone uh, come to you that, that is speaking uh, things other than the truth. That's spoiling mm -hmm. uh, the word. That's taking the word and, and, and uh, mm -hmm. uh, trying to think of the right words I want to say. Yeah, I, I'm I not sure if I made my point. When we try to make sense out of what we don't understand, we tend to grab things. He's trying to deal with the fact that these people are coming up with spirits. He said, that's why they translate elemental spirits, uh, spoiling you by making you believe in something that really does not exist. Or trust yeah. in a spirit that, that really is of this world, but not of Christ. Uh, I know we sometimes like to deal with doctrines, but it's even it's even worse than that. He goes on and begins to make make more impressions about the fact that we're taken captive. Uh, you begin to believe in the boogeyman, or if you're from down south, then Hank. Uh, that's the elemental spirit. That's not what God. That, that's not what we're supposed to be believing. Or in in the Princess Diana, she they had them believing uh in in this goddess that's going to help them be able to be fruitful and have a male child or have children and so they, all those elemental spirits uh you, you hear them talk about the elemental spirits in romans chapter one kind of thing uh they worship and serve the creature more than the creator uh who is just fallen uh, they they we began talking about people in the church they, they're talking about they worship and serve the creature chapter one of romans uh, uh verse number 15 and following, uh, he begins to talk about the, the departure from uh, the true and living God. He says what may be known of God is hidden in us, but we began to follow these elemental, these spirits of the universe rather than the Holy Spirit. And so you have to be careful in because we get deceived by people who, who fake and lie on the Spirit of God. Let me give you some indirect, some directly. Uh, people jumping down in, in church talking about they got the Holy Ghost. That's lying. That, that's lying. Those are elemental spirit. The spirit of God doesn't make you fall down on the floor, wiggle around, and jerk you. That, that's, that's an elemental spirit. John calls it a dumb spirit. Amen. We, we lie about dreams that we had uh, that, that give us authority to, to write. And we got a lot of people who are following these elemental spirits even in, in, in the body "Quote unquote body of Christ" as, as popular religion would be, uh, that make people all of a sudden now as they preach and suddenly talk in tongues. That is not the spirit of God. You follow me? That no man deceive you by vain philosophies or, or corrupt you uh, with empty and deceitful elemental spirit or spoil you, uh, to make you unuseful to God, uh, to make you unedible, to make your words unedible that only make people sick whenever they consume the faith that you have. Okay? I hope y'all got that. Amen? Amen. So, so let's go to the next, next part of Colossians, uh, Colossians uh, 2. Uh, I, I want y'all also have to take that in the context of six and seven to help you kind of under, understand that. Okay, uh, so if you read verse number eight, jump back up to six and seven, and, and that's going to give you uh, somewhat understanding of that. Let's drop down to sixteen and seventeen because my time is running, 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 running out. Amen. So by the time you get down to sixteen and seventeen, I'm, and I'm running out of New English Translation right now. Therefore, do not let anyone judge you with respect of foods, drinks, 
or any manner of feast or new moon or Sabbath day. Uh, these are only a shadow of the things to come. Mind you, this was written back in the first century. But the reality is in Christ. Let no man, uh, let no one who delighteth in humility and the worshiping of angels pass judgment on you. He gets the element of spirit again. Uh, that a person goes on at great length about what he was supposed he has supposedly seen, but he is puffed up with empty notions by his fleshly mind. He is not. He has not held fast to the head from which the whole body supported and knitted together through its lig ligaments and sinews grows with the growth that is from God. If ye have died with Christ to the elemental spirits of the world, why do you submit to them as though you live in the world? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These are these all are destined to perish with the use funded as they are founded as they are on human commands and teachings. He's talking about not being made a fool of and not being a fool. Is that in your Bible? So let me tell you, uh, as David uh, encouraged in 2 Samuel 3 and 33, when the king lamented over Abner and said, died Abner as a fool, dieth. So I encourage you today, based on our study, soldier up and don't die like a fool. Amen. 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 I did my best to go through that in, in our time allotted. Things got better, E. Appreciate it. I was able to hear, and, and the, the echo kind of went out. So we are trying to, even, we won't be interactive like that during service Sunday. But we ought to be able to. to uh, we're, ch we're changing to a new uh, a software that ought to help us uh, represent better on online. And for those members who are not able to come and worship with us in present and as well, we ought to be able to heighten it and and help our um, presentation even here as we come together. So. Um, I'll be, be communicating to you. Hopefully soon we'll be able to have Bible class in here together. Uh, uh, for those who want to come out to Bible class and those who are at home will still be able to participate along with us. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We're pretty good for the first time. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, fellowshipping with you more. Are there any questions, comments, or statements before we go to prayer requests? I know I went through this kind of fast. I know I kind of hastened through uh, but if you have questions that you don't want to say here, please feel free to put them online and uh, either I'll print them out or I'll, I'll address them in the next class. Praise God. Send them to Candy though, so she'll, she'll make sure I get them. Amen. Prayer requests, church, prayer requests. Amen, amen, amen. Yes. Sister Tanya Whitmore and the Whitmore family in prayer for their loss. Uh, Sister Tanya's auntie. I ask you to pray for Allie. I mm. understand she has COVID. Oh, oh poor Allie. Okay, Sister Allie. Yeah, she she COVID. went to the family reunion. Okay, yeah. All right. Uh, be careful out there, cause I've been hearing a lot of reports of people who are coming down with COVID lately. Amen, Sister Ali Williams. Let's go. Amen. Yes. This is Teresa Milton. I'm just asking for prayers. Um, I went back to the doctor on Monday, and they don't know what's wrong with me, but I'm not having real chronic pains. So I'm barely um, getting around, so I'm just asking for prayers that I can stay keep the faith because it's very depressing because they don't know what's wrong with my leg, mm -hmm. and I don't need them. I'm just asking for prayers. Okay. Sister <laughs> All right, this is Teresa says she needs prayer. Uh, something's wrong with her legs and she's just not feeling well. Sister Candy. Okay, Sharika. Any others? Huh? Okay. Amen. Praise God. Are there any others? Uh, 
vous ici. Who is it? You said Moto G. Moto. So whoever Moto, say it again louder. Moto G. Okay, whoever that is, we got your prayers for strength. Amen. Thank you, it's Jamie. Hey, Jamie, how you doing? We got you. All right. All right. Any others? Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, we thank you so much for your blessing. We thank you for this opportunity to come to you in prayer. We glorify your name and we thank you for all that you do and we thank you for your son Jesus who is the author and finisher of our faith. Lord, we thank you for giving us love when we deserve hate, giving us strength when we deserve weakness and giving us healing when we have done nothing uh, to deserve health. Pray God that you will hear our prayer now, that you have mercy and grace toward us. Father, be with Sister Jamie, that you bless her life, that you will continue to strengthen her and guide her in a way that brings her uh, strength and gives you glory. Father, pray for Sister Tanya and her family as they have uh, put to rest uh, their loved one, their auntie. We ask God that you will have mercy and, on them and give them comfort in this hour uh, of bereavement. Father, we pray for Sister Teresa as you continue to bless her life as well. We know she's been struggling with the health. We ask that you'll be with the doctors that they'll be at the peak of their skill. We ask, oh God, that you will open their eyes and bless them to be strong enough to find out what is wrong, to give proper, proper diagnosis and proper treatment to her, to give her relief. However, God, our faith is not in them, it's in you. We ask, Father, that you may heal, deliver, that you may touch her with the hand of your, of your goodness and cause her to become strong and give you glory in all things. Father, we, we pray for uh, uh, Sister... Um, Uh, Sister Williams, we pray God for Sister Williams, uh, who has uh, contracted COVID. We pray God for her health. Uh, we pray, Father, for her recovery. We pray, Lord, for her full uh, recovery. And we just ask God that she might be back together with us at the next appointed time. Uh, Father, we pray for Sister C, who is also going through uh, a lot right now. We pray, God, that you would guide her to a place of peace, uh, that she may also uh, be, be found uh, comfortable even in those circumstances. Uh, Lord God, we know you're able to do exceedingly and abundantly above all that we ask. So, Father, we've asked and we ask, oh God, that you might deliver. For those, Lord, that we, we don't know to ask, we ask, Father, that your ear will be open to their prayers, that their strength will come from above and not from beneath. Help us, oh God, not to be fools. Help us, Father, to walk circumspectly. And, Lord, let us, oh God, be a light unto all those who see our lives all those who hear our words, all those who watch our faith, we know, God, that you are able to do more than we ask. And we pray, oh God, that we will have the audacity, the confidence, the faith to ask. You told us in Hebrews that without faith it's impossible to please you. For they who come to you must believe that you are, and you are the rewarder of those who diligently seek you. Father, we're seeking you. And we ask you, Lord, for one more thing. Be with uh, Brother Thomas, who has lost his daughter. Be with them and their family uh, at this time. Uh, help sort out the confusion uh, of losing such a such a, a close uh, relative, Lord. And know how hard it must be for him to lose a daughter. And we pray, God, that you will bless him and his family with the words, with the ways, with the confidence in you to navigate through the valley and the shadow of death. We trust you, O God. Be with us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you all. Thank you for the Bible study. Thank you for the wonderful uh, input and the comments. Uh, thank you for your stewardship in the word of God. Uh, now, church, find somebody and tell them the truth about God. Walk in the light as he is in the light, and he will bless your soul. God bless. Have a good night. Good night. God bless you, too. Good night. You good all. Night. <laughs> hey there. Good night, everybody. Good night, Brother Green. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, Brother Arnold. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Hey. Trying to see as many people as I normally do. Is there seven? I, did, I, did it go out on my Facebook? I thought I stopped the stream. Who is that? Did we have everybody on Zoom? I didn't see that many people on Zoom. I only saw about five or six people. Yeah. Was it because they